Welcome to the Sanity Project Podcast, where you can awaken your mind to clarity and success even in today's life challenges. We're here to provide insights and solutions that will help you live a sane, healthy, and prosperous life. Here is your host, Joanne Victoria. Hello, everybody. This is Joanne Victoria with another amazing episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. You are here to discover a life of clarity, confidence, sanity, and entrepreneurial success. Our guest today is Pamela Brinker. Pamela Brinker is a licensed clinical psychotherapist and has been for 25 years. She guides clients on their journeys through pain into bravery, partially leading her to write a book called Conscious Bravery, Caring for Someone with Addiction. And for those of you who are listening, if you have someone in your immediate family or your extended family who is addicted to anything, listen to this program and get her book, Conscious Bravery, Caring for Someone with Addiction. We welcome to the show, Pamela Brinker. Thank you so much, Joanne. Well, I'm grateful that you are here because your topic, your life how to find bravery amidst challenging and devastating circumstances. It's when I listen to what you have to say, you know, I get sad and angry at the same time. So why don't you tell the audience? Cause they want to know, how did you get here to become aware of, I, I don't even understand the concept of conscious bravery other than what I've read in your book and in um, you establishing the four pillars of your life. So <clears throat> lead us through your story. Sure. Well, 11 years ago, my husband died from brain cancer, grade four glioblastoma, which is a form of brain cancer that's incurable. And just after that happened, my two teenage sons turned to drugs and alcohol to cope, unbeknownst to me. And they landed in this scary and tumultuous pit of addiction and mental health challenges um, from which they're still working to heal. And what happened to me is I became completely overwhelmed. I was just devastated and I felt sunk with no way out. And at that time with a 13 year old and a 16 year old, I realized I had to figure something out. I said to myself one day, I can't do this. This was after my husband passed. And then it was sort of like grace came to me later that afternoon. And I realized I have to. And I remembered something that Cheryl Strayed, who wrote Wild, and she also wrote a beautiful book called Tiny Beautiful Things. Cheryl Strayed said that we parents don't have the luxury of despair. And that realization just kind of snapped me into this conscious awareness really that brought me out of this abyss of shock and devastation. And I realized that as a clinician, as a psychotherapist who'd worked for clients for, you know, over 25 years, I had to apply the same tools and practices to my own life and modify them to work for me. And it was absolutely crucial to make that work. And I just decided I have to help my family and I have to be a a present mother who can find the calm amidst this these roaring seas, you know? So you came up with this, the idea of, well, it's not coming up with the idea. You were living this life of stress beyond belief and you needed to be brave. Mm-hmm. Because, yes. go oh. ahead. No, that's fine. Go ahead. Well, you know, um, they're really, I started using the word brave, Joanne, because it just arrived. That was the word that I knew I had to, to embody. And, and over the next year, I realized there really isn't a bulk of research or knowledge. There isn't a protocol for bravery, for emotional bravery. There's all kinds of information out there about how to be athletically strong. And and I was a former elite athlete. I knew how to be physically strong I was a triathlete. I was a synchronized swimmer. I was a skate ski racer. I knew how to embody strength in my body, but I had to start applying that not just emotionally in my heart, but in my whole being. And so I came up with this concept of conscious bravery, because to me, the world doesn't really understand fully what it means to be conscious. 
at least a lot of people I know think that consciousness is about being calm in your mind or, or sitting in meditation and being awake and aware. But to me, consciousness is about being vibrantly awake, aware, and alive on all levels of our experience. And so I break up conscious bravery into sort of two segments, consciousness being this ability to be awake and dialed in on every level of our experience as a human. And then bravery is really being able to be aware of whatever is needed in any given moment and to do that. Bravery means taking action. So conscious bravery isn't just an intention, it's a way we live. And I had to do that. I had to start living this conscious bravery that I had tried to teach my clients and walk alongside my clients into for years. And I start, suddenly had to do it in my own family. <laughs> I understand that. And I'm hearing um, a lot of sadness mm. in your voice and a lot of that you're, I would imagine this would make you very, very tired. Mm. I mean, losing your, your husband to a terrible cancer watching your two children are they your only children the two boys yes watching your two male children um just going through what they're going through and it's just terrible Mm. and your energy is the one that's being drained so to be brave in the light of all of that is it's beyond bravery. It's it's obviously it's spiritual, um, but it's beyond bravery. I mean, you have made yourself into a force to be reckoned with. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I'm still learning as I go, and yes, there is sadness in my in my life all of the time and I allow myself to feel it and I believe that because I allow myself the deep deep sadness and I am able to empty of attachments to wanting things to turn out a certain way because I'm able to kind of go to the far left in that regard I'm able to live in the gray area of the middle and go to the far right too and be a pretty pretty joyful person most people who know me really well say wow you're joyous you laugh easily and you're lighthearted." but I can really get down and dirty if I need to you know and I can I can put focus into things as needed and I watched my sons do that too you know nobody wants to have mental health challenges no one wants to have severe ADHD or attention deficit issues and impulsivity no one no one wants to have depression or panic ridden ridden anxiety or bipolar highs and lows. And so when those things were happening in my sons, I had tremendous compassion because they didn't ask for those things to occur. And simultaneously, while they were having these mental health challenges, they were seeing drugs and alcohol as the solution to their pain. No one wants to become addicted either to any substance, you know, to drugs or alcohol or to eating or shopping or anything. Who wants that? It's, it's stressful. We think it's the solution, but in actuality, it just creates more anxiety. And so I noticed that happening in them. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have got to not only just be awake, but I've got to live awake. And I've got to be, I I decided and determined and committed to be an oasis for them. They were struggling in this wilderness of addiction and mental health, and they were having all kinds of highs and lows and making poor decisions and ending up in jail, ending up in different treatment centers. But I had to, to become the stable one. And I committed to that. And it, it was hard, you know, having all of those emotions at the same time. But that's, that's part of what I think conscious bravery is too. And what I had to learn was to allow the my sympathetic nervous system to be kicked in you know that's the part of us that wants to fight or flee or curl up in a ball and pretend that we're dead you know (laughs) i had to learn to integrate that sympathetic nervous system with the parasympathetic nervous system which is our capacity to calm down so in any given moment if the phone rang at midnight or if the paramedics showed up at my my door with the police you know at 11 p.m and that happened that happened so many times. In fact, one time 
my, my son actually, my youngest son called 911 on himself because he was afraid of what he would do. And so paramedics, uh, the CRT team and paramedics knocked on our bedroom door at 12 midnight. And so I was immediately alerted and um, had to have that capacity, Joanne, to be able to, to know I wanted to fight or flee, but I had to be calm. I had to help my son calm down. Yeah, and- you, you stepped into your power there. That's for darn sure. Mm-hmm. And when your son called 911, was he calling from his bedroom? He's calling from the kitchen. Oh, same difference, but he was calling from the house. Again, this is this is what is maybe heartbreaking for, for anyone listening, but I bet I'm sure that some of you who are listening can relate to this. My son had panic attacks and he was using drugs. And that combination is just horrific. And so he was in the kitchen about to get a knife to kill our cat, Socrates. No, he had a realization that he should call 911. You know, somehow something graced him with, oh my gosh, I can't do this. So he called 911 on himself. And when they, when we got out of our bedroom, came downstairs with everyone, he had been kind of hiding actually. And he came out and said in tears, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm so sorry. And we said, it's okay. A lot of my conscious bravery has m- meant not doing what was instinctual for me, which was t- kind of to roar like a lion, lion and say, what the heck, let's get it together. <laughs> sure. But it meant calming down and being patient and listening, I guess, like a cat, you know? So, so just being present is part of what I have had to learn to do and feel I do pretty well now. Well, I, I mean, I keep wanting to say you are so brave, and yet, mm-hmm. bec- and that's what you've written about this consciousness of, of bravery so that you can choose bravery because you were able to do it maybe easier than other people who are listening to this podcast because they, you know, because you're number one experienced, you're trained, and you've helped other people go through this, and you made a decision regarding your sons and yourself on how you wanted your family to work on some level that was beneficial to everyone. And part of that was being brave. And I just don't think that enough people get acknowledged for that. So how did you handle everything that was going on, Pamela? Your husband is gone. Um, Your son is in the kitchen with a knife. Sounds like a game he's in the knife on the phone calling 911 because he's afraid he is going to kill your cat um what did you do in instances like that i was able to stay calm and soothe him soothe myself my husband and i turned to one another in other instances though i was i was so imperfect I was irritable. I I lost my temper. I would be short with both of my sons. And then I would catch myself and realize this isn't helping anybody. You know, and I I realized over the course of the first year that our whole family needed to change because I didn't have the tools and skills as a former athlete. I'd never used drugs myself. (laughs) And so I really didn't understand that, that, that my sons were becoming addicted to them. Their brains were being hijacked by them. They didn't want to use drugs as the solution to their problems. And so I needed to, to be better equipped. And so thankfully, my their dad, my former husband, and I and his wife and my new boyfriend and I got involved in family treatment together, family therapy with them. Um, both of my sons ended up going to wilderness programs, which weren't just to send them away. It was really to help our whole family. We were sending them to something better, you know, to a solution where our whole family as a system would receive help. And and that's what Dr. Phil at the time had said. I was, I was asking friends and colleagues, what do we do here? And one of my friends said, you know, well, Dr. Phil says that wilderness therapy is one of the best things for teenage boys. And Joanne, it turned out to be because it was like a rite of passage for both of them to be in the wilderness with no screens, no phones. We wrote letters back and forth to one another. We did family therapy when they would come into this main camp 
once a week. And they were not in wilderness therapy simultaneously. One went ahead of the other and they went to two different programs. Um, but, but wilderness therapy is amazing because they are out there, you know, in the middle of nowhere, hiking and walking every day, learning to make their own fires, making their own um, shelters, doing yoga, meditation, talking about feelings all the time because their field guides are trained therapists, basically. And then I had the, I had the ability to work on myself from afar and really to start to hone in and kind of modify some of the tools and practices that I taught my clients. And, and one of those, really, you're asking me what conscious bravery is. I think it's achieved by developing resilience through self-care practices. You know, I had to learn to put the oxygen mask on my own face first, which did not come naturally at all. And I'm sure for anyone on an airplane, that doesn't come naturally. You know, we want to help the other person that we love. And I wanted to help my sons more than anything. You know, when you lose your husband, when I lost my husband to brain cancer and had no ability to control or help him, I learned to love bigger than I've ever loved in my life. And, and I was able to learn to love my sons in a different way. Instead of wanting them to turn out the way I wanted them to be, I had to really live in the moment, in the present moment with a kind of a now there's this approach, you know, like stuff would happen and I would think, oh my gosh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, hmm, now there's this. And I, I learned that from a yoga instructor friend here in town at one of her classes. She said, whenever we're encountering any devastation or anything that we didn't want to have happen, it doesn't really work to fight it. And I found that to be true. It's going to happen anyway. In fact, it, usually it's already happened. And so it helped me to learn to relax and to say, okay, hmm, now there's this. And then I could activate that, that intermediary capacity to be with my sympathetic nervous system and my parasympathetic nervous system, or to put it in street language to be both anxious and calm at the same time. You know, it's like I, I learned how to be real, but but more compassionately calm. And to me, that's what conscious bravery is. I like to say that conscious bravery isn't always tough as nails. It can be, but bravery can look like softness and sound like stillness. And yes. that's, that's what it became for me. I had to learn that bravery means that I don't just listen to this mess between my ears that tells me to leap into action. You know, I had to put my hands on my heart, metaphorically speaking, and, and actually put my hands on my heart and say, I'm right here. It's going to be all right. We'll figure this out. And I did that all the time. I would put my hands around my arms and I would walk and I would, I would walk around the house and say, it's all right. I'm right here. And I learned how to be really compassionate toward myself. And how to really be in my body because bravery doesn't just emerge from thoughts that tell us what to do. Bravery is embodied on, on six different levels. And so I, I learned something at wilderness therapy called the four lines check that I modified over the next four years. And I turned it into what I call the whole being scan. And I started practicing the whole being scan all of the time, every day, at least twice a day. And what the whole being scan is, it's, it's a, it's a form of mindfulness in action that, that we cultivate. So we tap into our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our souls, or what I like to call the more graceful word is our essences, our intuition and the energy around us or the space or the environment. And so I would do a really quick check-in like, okay, what's going on in my heart emotionally? All right. I'm feeling disrupted. I'm feeling nervous, but I'm actually feeling hopeful. You know, so I might give three words to it and then I would tune into my body. All right. I got a pit in my stomach. All right. Wow. That's happening. And my throat is tight. And what's happening in my mind? My mind is racing, but at the same time, I have pinpoint focus. You know how sometimes we can have both? Yes. <laughs> yes. So that would be happening perhaps. And then I would tap into what I like to call my essence, which is our deepest self. And I would say, okay, what do I know here? And I would listen. And that part of me would be able to say, this moment, this situation is not who you are. In fact, this situation doesn't define you. Remember who you are. You are your essence. And so I would, I would tap into my essence and regain a sense of who I was. And then I would listen to my intuition. What's my intuition telling me? And usually it's right because our intuition is based on data from a whole bunch of different experiences. And, and it's based on data from all six of these realms. 
heart, body, mind, essence, intuition, and energy. So our intuition is really what I feel is the database. And then I would tap into the energy space around me and, and, and listen to what's going on in my environment, listen to the vibe. And anybody who knows about how you handle trauma, you know that sometimes that's calming to because the energetic space around us, if I'm in my home, that space can feel sacred and supportive. But if I'm in a new environment and the energy around me is frenetic, then I want to go inside to my essence for calm, you know? And so anyway, I learned that whole being, whole being scan. I teach that whole being scan. And it's something that I've learned to do on the, on the fly in a minute. And, and people I teach it to think, oh, is this going to take me two to five minutes? And I say, no, how, what's it like for you when you ride a bike? When you ride a bike, do you get on and do you think, okay, I've got to listen to my feelings. I've got to listen to my intuition. I've got to tap into the energy space around me and watch my environment. No, we just hop on a bike and we start riding because most of us have learned to ride a bike with our whole beings. And so I love that conscious bravery to me has data. It's not just this esoteric umbrella, you know, that I, I lift up over me and say, boy, I sure hope I can be consciously brave. <laughs> right. I use these skills and these tools because they work and I do them all the time myself. Well, um, conscious bravery, caring for someone with addiction is available on Amazon. The guest's name is Pamela Brinker, B-R-I-N-K-E-R. And her website is BeBrave.us. And on her website, BeBrave.us, she has a page that's titled Tools. And on that page, you can scroll down and see numerous opportunities for you to create a shift in your life, maybe even a shift to bravery. I want to also um, remind the listeners that after they finish listening to this podcast, that they get a pen and paper and listen to it again and start taking notes because that's when the connection with your body and your mind and the nerves in your, and all of both of them will connect and you will um, hear things that you didn't hear the first time because that's just the way it works. So if you take notes on that, if you share this podcast to people that you know have a family of addiction, this will help them. And I want to thank Pamela for being here today. It's been an amazing, interesting day behind the curtain here. And <laughs> we'll go into that at another time, audience, because unless you're here, you wouldn't appreciate it. Um, and I want to thank Pamela for being here because she has introduced not only bravery, but conscious bravery to my life as well. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you. You're just a joy to talk with and such a real person, Joanne. I, I, it's my honor to know you and to be on this podcast. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. Well, take care, everybody. And don't forget that pen and paper. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Sanity Project Podcast. Please go to AskJoanneVictoria.com to listen to more podcasts. Check out Joanne's coaching programs and get a free copy of her report, Five Steps to Achieve Life Work Harmony. That's AskJoanneVictoria.com. Take care and thanks for being here.